Okay, yeah, I'm not doing that for the whole review. A Quiet Place was an incredibly convenient movie with a ton of plot holes and inconsistencies, but the premise was more than fresh enough to work to the film's advantage. An apocalypse rooted in soundproofing your life introduces a dynamic between survival and preparedness, while also fighting to regain normalcy. And for what it is, Krasinski carried his ideas to term. What I went in worried about was whether or not the charm of this self-contained experiment would wear out with a sequel. If that disappears, but the numerous, plentiful conveniences remain, then I don't know how much I can support this. Uh, one of the first things that happens is someone gets caught in a bear trap, and I perked up a little because it unfolds more organically than the child in danger cliche from the beginning of the first one. I did not expect that to be the highlight of the entire film, though. It does nothing to justify its own existence, with the same amount of, if not more, contrivance as the first film. As in, oh no, this child is completely safe in an underground room, but for no reason he needs to start wandering around this factory and accidentally make some noise. Uh, we really needed the climax to happen, so shut up. Everything's taken a few steps backwards. The extreme lack of focus present here sets in early on and does not get any better throughout. After the first 20 minutes or so and we meet Cillian Murphy, the story just doesn't go much of anywhere. The characters are all static and have no resolution by the end. Even from the trailer, Murphy's these people left aren't worth saving thing doesn't get addressed besides that one line. A good half of the people in this movie don't do anything? I've not sat down and watched a horror movie voluntarily this uneventful in a long time. My mind started wandering. Like, I started asking questions that I could have asked during the first one, but didn't because I was invested in the story. Like, I asked why these aliens are even killing people? They don't eat them, they're not defending any territory, they landed here on an asteroid so I don't know if they're actually invading. If you were a big fan of the first film invested in the avenues this sequel could take, I feel like the lack of thought put into the story and characters this time should really upset you. By the time a somewhat new, expansive idea for this world comes along, the movie just tacks on an action sequence and abruptly ends. There is a level of polish to the filmmaking, I guess, but all for a story this bare bones is like getting a shitty birthday cake with really pretty candles. There's not much to say about A Quiet Place Part 2. One might say there's as much to say as it offers you. But there was one little spoiler that really demands attention. So if you're not interested in hearing about that, I give A Quiet Place Part 2 a 4 out of 10, maybe a 5 on a good day. But if you don't want this movie spoiled for you, click off. Get out of here. I don't want you. Spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Anyways, the entire plot, that is when it starts, like halfway through the film, is Cillian Murphy and the daughter looking for an island that may have survivors on it. They steal a boat and find out the aliens can't swim. People can live on islands as close as a couple kilometers from the shore and be completely fine. Alright. Unless these aliens landed on every square kilometer of land in the world, somehow, shouldn't we have been completely fine? This entire community survives on an island you can see from the shore. But what about Hawaii, Japan, Madagascar, any number of small island nations across the world? At some point, shouldn't information have gotten out that these island landmasses are completely safe as the aliens haven't touched them? What if all the aliens came from the same side of space and landed on one hemisphere? They aren't connected by land. Listen, when your sequel's idea of expanding the world actually causes the world to make less sense, you have a problem. We're expected to believe nobody in all of these untouched places came to the same conclusion of using a cochlear implant to expose the aliens' weakness? Have they done anything to find possible ways to kill them? Their only weapons are teeth and claws. How hard could it possibly be to go to the mainland, capture one, and experiment on it? How did this apocalypse even happen? Anyway, that's it. I didn't care much for this movie. On top of everything, correct me if I'm wrong, 
but the first one didn't have this many jump scares. Like, really? That's what you're gonna fall back on in search of more substance for your horror franchise? Whatever, you already know my rating. Four, maybe five out of ten, whatever. Anyway, did you like this movie more than me? Less than me? Well, if you care to, please tell me. And as always, if you like not only words, but the way I arrange and then say them, please consider helping me out with the algorithm by liking this video and subscribing to me, Brian, from the channel Brian. Thank you, and goodbye. Oh,